We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you praise. We thank you, Father. Masuta brade ida pahanda ta brodo ida prade sita gabaha. Ma zegederi anda brodo ida prade sita. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be glorified. Be magnified. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, glory to God. You are welcome to Apostolic Grace broadcast this beautiful Monday morning. We are broadcasting live from the city of Abuja, hallelujah, praise God. It's nice to have you at the other side of the screen, glory to God. I was church service yesterday. Oh, wonderful service we had in church yesterday. Wonderful, wonderful. I will see if I can upload a video today or tomorrow so that we do uh, cut off some things that are not supposed to be there and all of that. I hope I will be able to show you the video of our service yesterday. We have laying on of hand service. That's our force in our church. Our church is going to be, it was four years on the 22nd of this month. And I thought that's our first ever. It was, my friend, it was powerful. It was awesome. We have not seen God like that. Glory to God. Yokes were broken. Healing took place. You know, people had the restoration, restoration of grace, restoration of anointing, restoration in every every areas of life. It was powerful. Glory to God. So I watched your own church service yesterday. Glory to God. You know, every service that we have, every time that we children of God gather, that is supposed to be release of power. That's what I believe. The Bible says Jesus was teaching somewhere and the power of God was present to heal them. So anytime we gather, there's supposed to be demonstration of the grace and the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me say to you as we start, you are going to have an amazing week. Glory to God. I have a powerful word for you today. And that word, if look, if you can believe the word of God, it will do great and amazing things in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. By the way, the strength of God is upon you this week as you go. Amen. God's strength is upon you. Hallelujah. Now, I put a, an audio message on my audio uh, channel or page on audio mark. You know, just search for my name there, Emmanuel Adeyomoye. I put a powerful audio for this morning. On the, I call it Monday Blessing. You've got to run to Audio Mark right now and go, go download, go stream that audio. It will bless your life. Praise God. You know, we do this uh, live stream or the video live stream. We also do audio um, uh, broadcast also, daily web broadcast platform. By the way, if you are not on our mailing list yet, that means if you are not receiving that audio, it's free. Send me your name, your name, your phone number in the comment section and I will put you on our mailing list. That means every Monday morning, Monday through Friday, you will receive fresh word from God, fresh, powerful word from God. Or you, need, you have somebody you want us to put on the mailing list, put the person's name on the comment section and then... Um, the person's name and phone number on the in the comment section, and then we contact the person, and then we we'll begin to send the person God's word every day, Mondays through Fridays. Glory to God. I want to read from Mark chapter two very quickly. Uh, Mark chapter two. What am I going to share with you this morning before I pray? Is this rip off, rip it off. I'm going to be speaking specifically against limitations this morning. Those things that limit you from, uh, from being who God has made you. Those things that limit you from being uh, at the point that God wants you to be. Those things that limit you from being healed or being, or being whatever it is that limits you. Whatever area of your life. We're going to deal with that this morning. And then we pray. I want to read from Mark chapter 2. And from verse 1, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room for to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of, of the palsy, which was born of four. 
verse 4. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered uncover the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy laid. These were friends, five friends. One of them was sick. And they needed to get to Jesus, but they couldn't get to Jesus because of the press, because of the people there, because of um, a lot of people, the house was packed up. Imagine if it was a hall, everywhere was packed up, inside, outside the gallery, everywhere. Every seat was taken, every space was taken. There was no way they could bring their friend inside. And man, they were desperate for their friend to be healed. Wow, such friends. We need such friends in our lives who we, who we go all the way, who we go full length to make sure that it is well with us. You know, we need those kind of people in our lives. Friends, family, uh, ministry colleagues, uh, business colleagues or business partners or some people that we come around us and carry us in destiny that they will make sure until it is well with us, they won't let go. So these friends brought their friend to Jesus to be healed, nowhere to get in, because there is press everywhere, pressure everywhere, people with all kinds of, what did they do? They do the most amazing thing a friend can do to another friend. They went up the roof. Lord have mercy. Imagine them carrying a sick person. I hope you know that a sick person is heavier to carry than somebody who is not sick. Yes, imagine them carrying that person up the roof of that house. Imagine the stress. Imagine the pressure. Imagine what they had to do. Imagine what they had to go through. They were not even thinking that if we go up this roof, we rip up this roof, the owner of the house will arrest us. That was not their primary preoccupation. Their primary preoccupation was for their friend to be healed. Glory to God. Listen to me, my friend. I don't like using this word, but let me use it for you this morning. Until you become desperate, the limitations in your life will not go. Now, the, 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 my use of desperation is not for you to do anything untoward. What I mean is that until your, your determination hit the roof, Limitations can go because limitations don't want to go. It is you that we say, no way, I have to knock off these limitations. These four friends, we must get our, our friend to Jesus. We will, let's just drop this friend at the feet of Jesus. Whatever Jesus does to him or do with him is Jesus' business. Our own is to get him to Jesus. And there was limitation of the prayer. So much people there. They got to the roof. The roof was saying, you cannot come through. What did they do? One of them said, what, are, what is our, your, your problem? What are we waiting for? Let's tear up this roof. we we'll settle the problem later. So they tore up the roof. Yes, it's, it's, it's in scripture. They tore up the roof. Amen. Verse 4. And when they could not come now unto him for the prayer, they uncovered the roof. They tore it open. Our friends have to be healed. We've got to have miracle today. Listen to me until you become determined and desperate. Limitation remains there. Amen. They weren't going to go home with their sick friend. Still sick. They were, they were going to go home with their sick friend healed of all of, of all infirmity. They were tired of carrying him from doctors to doctors, spending all their money. Maybe they were even in the same business with that. Maybe they were into joint venture. Maybe they, they put more resources together to do business. And this friend was a major part of the business and the business is suffering. And they have spent a lot of money. They have spent a lot of money from doctor to doctor, from one surgery to another surgery. But they said to themselves, enough. That is a man in the town. He's a physician. He's a rabbi. And they called him the son of God. Let's go see him. And then there was limitation. There was barrier. Listen to me. Until you do something about the barrier ahead of your life, the barrier will be there. The barrier is just fulfilling its own ministry. <laughs> That's the truth. So until you begin to do something, to begin to do something about that barrier, about that limitation, it stares you in the face. So it's not, it's not majorly or basically about the devil. It's basically about you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So you see, it's not, it's not basically about the enemy or about the devil. It's basically you. 
What are you going to do about those limitations that are starting you in the face? What are you going to do? Are you going to keep them there and, and then let them hinder you from moving to the next level? Praise God. Until, let me read from my notes here. Until you do the impossible, the possible will not be possible. Now, these guys did the impossible. Glory to God. We are not going to return this guy back home with this infirmity. We are tired. We have spent money. We are losing money in business. We have spent all our savings. The money that we are thinking to diversify into other areas of business is gone. We are tired. Let's just dump this guy at the feet of Jesus. Let's find every means. They thought they were going to have a thoroughfare. If they didn't know there was going to be so much crowd. But they got there and they were struck. What do we do? There are something you can do. Listen to me, my friend. In that situation that you are in, in that circumstance, that is something you can do that will get you out of that situation. Glory to God. That is something you have to do. That is something you can do. They don't tell me you can't do anything. You know, people make this statement, I don't have any other choice. There is always a choice for you to make. I was, I was speaking with a young woman who was living in a, in a, in a man's house that she wasn't married to. I said, you are, you are not supposed to be there. This person here is not marrying you and you are not even sure he's, not, he's going to marry you. Why are you staying there? And she said, well, I don't have a choice. I said, young woman, you have a choice. You could choose to go and sleep under the brick to, to keep your dignity and your womanhood. You could go to sleep in the stalls or in the marketplace to show to God that you are serious. And let's see if God will not provide you an accommodation. That's always a choice. I don't believe there is no choice. No, somebody say, uh, I don't have any other choice. There is always a better choice. This friend, they said to themselves, we are not returning this guy back. We've got to do something. We will do the impossible. So listen, my friend, until you do the impossible, the possible will not be possible. I remember many years ago when my landlord was threatening to eject me and my family from the house because we were owing him a balance of the rent. And he went to his house to go talk to him and he was behaving. So I told him, I said, sir, look at me, listen to me. If it pleases God for me and my family, it was my wife, myself and our son at that time, you know. And then I said to him, I said, if it pleases God for us to go and sleep under the bridge, so be it. I'm not going to beg you any further. If you don't want to give us time, it's okay. And we left his house. Guess what? God rescued us. There's always a choice if you decide to do the impossible. The impossible that we did that time is a story for another day. Glory to God. Until your passion and desire to have your need met makes you tear up the roof of limitations. Your desires cannot be met. You've got to rip off the limitation. You've got to rip off the roof. Those things that limit you from getting to Jesus. Those things that limit you from getting to your miracle. Those things that limit you from having your need met. You've got to fight. Stop crying, my sister. Stop crying, my brother. Start fighting. These four friends were fighting for the life of their friends. Enough of complaining. You know, we complain a lot. Every Any little discomfort, we complain. If not that I was born there, if not that my parents were not rich, if not that I, I didn't go to school, if not that nobody is employing me, we give a lot of excuses. Enough of getting excuse, giving excuses. It, it is time to increase your level of passion to knock off that limitation glory to God to rip off the roof to rip off the limitations and the barriers glory to God hallelujah those four friends they desire healing for their friend and that's all they needed that's all that was that makes any meaning to them the roof was not a big deal to them they were not even thinking what the owner will do to them they were only thinking we need to get our friend healed and that was that was their primary preoccupation. So what is that thing staring you in the face? You've got to rise up, my friend. You've got to carry that thing and give it at the feet of Jesus. Look at what Jesus Christ said before I leave that place to tell you another one. He said, when Jesus saw, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. You see right there. Once the sin is forgiven, healing takes place. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Look at him. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man does speak blasphemies? How who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately Jesus perceived in the in his spirit that they so reason within themselves. He said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? 
whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, Arise unto thee. He said unto, I said, uh, and he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. Let me show you something that happened here. When the man took up his bed, they couldn't bring him inside because of the crowd. Mm -hmm. But now that he's healed, that he's carrying his bed, people will make way for him. People will not make way for you until you rise up and do the impossible. Did you hear what I said? His friends did the impossible. Now the impossible has become possible. Now he is going back home. The same people who didn't give him access, they made way for him. Thank you, Father. That's word. That's a word. Listen to me as you go in this week. Those who have refused to give you access before, those who have refused to grant you access before, they will give you access. Amen. They will give as you go. They will give you access. Those who have refused to make way for you. Because now you are returning with the power of God. Now you are returning with miracle. They will grant you access. They will make way for you. In the name that is above every name, the name Jesus Christ. Look at blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10 from verse 42. He was blind. Now, Blind Bartimeo didn't have any friend to carry him. He was sitting at the side of the road begging for money day in, day out. That was his life. Now, by the way, blind Bartimeo, Bartimeo means bar is, is, a, is Jewish for, what is it called now? For son. So, Bartimeo, Timeo, he was the son of Timeo, Timeo. And that means honorable. So what was the son of the honorable doing by the roadside begging? Well, that's not the story now. The story is this. He was blind. He was begging by the side of the road. Then he heard that Jesus was passing. No, Jesus was always having crowd around him. He was always having people, bystanders, all of all manner of those who were just there to just see. They were pressed there. The journalists were there. Everybody trying to grab news and all of that. And Jesus was walking and he heard that Jesus was passing that way. The Bible says, blind Bartimaeus began to cry, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they told him to shut up that the master didn't come for people like him. The Bible says, the more they shouted him down, the more he cried out louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And his cry attracted the attention of Jesus. Don't let anybody shout you down. Did you hear what I said? Mazu brother Ida Pahanda, Mazegedi Andata. Don't allow anybody to shout you down. Because it's not about them, it's about you. You are the one looking for miracle. You are the one who has a need. Don't allow anybody to shout you down. The Bible says. Bartimaeus kept shouting, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says his cry attracted the attention of Jesus. Hear me. Let me say it again. Until you do the impossible, the possible will not be possible. Until your passion hit the roof, Rip up the roof. Your miracle can be in your hand. This guy needed his eyes. Nobody to carry him. Nobody. He didn't have friends like those guys in Mark chapter 4, chapter 2 from verse 1. He didn't have friends to carry him. He was carrying his body by himself. And the Bible says he began to cry. And Jesus stopped. He said, call him. Let's hear his case. Now, something amazing happened there. When Bart blind Bartimaeus ran to Jesus, imagine a, a blind man running. Imagine a blind man who does not have sight. Imagine him running. 
he came to Jesus. What was Jesus supposed to do? Did he like, like he was supposed to do the same thing he did with that man with, the, with palsy. Or just to tell him, carry your bed, go on home. Because he knew that this man needed healing. But when blind Bartimaeus came to Jesus, something amazing happened. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, what, what, was, what was wrong with Jesus? Couldn't he see? Didn't he know that this man was blind? Of course, my friend, he knew, but he wanted blind Bartimaeus to be specific about the need that he had. Bartimaeus may not need money. You had that right. He, sorry, Bartimaeus may need money. He may not be healing that he needed. He may be looking for arms. So Jesus wanted him to talk with his mouth. Sometimes, my friend, People may not speak for you. You may have to be the one to speak for yourself. You may have to be the one to cry out for yourself. You have to cry out to be heard. Hey, my friend, you are too quiet. You are too lip sealed. Sometimes you have to cry on the rooftop to be heard. Sometimes you have to cry like a mad person to grab attention. Amen. That is a time to be quiet. That is a time to speak. In the issue of getting your desire, you may have to cry and shout until you get the attention of Jesus or until you get the attention of those who are supposed to help you. So Jesus asked him, what do you want to, me to do for you? The man said, I need my sight back. Jesus told him, your faith I healed you, go home. End of story. But there's something that Jesus, a blind Bartimaeus did there. The Bible says, he threw away his garment. And that's what I want to close from. And I will pray for you. He threw away the garment. Number one, the garment that people know, knew him with. The garment of blindness. He threw it away. Number two, if you read Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Seeing that we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us throw away every, every weight and every sin that doth so easily beset us and, and set on the race and that follow Jesus and all of that. Now, the, the garment that blind Bartimaeus threw away was the garment that was limiting him from entering into destiny. What is that garment? Is it garment of sin and unrighteousness? You've got to rip it off you so that you can enter into God's destiny, so that you can enter into a miracle. Are you still there? Glory to God. Now, the garment that people have known you with, the garment of shame, the garment of poverty, of frustration, of loneliness, of barrenness, you've got to rip it off. And those are the two prayers I'm going to pray for you as you go this week. I pray for you, my friend. That garment of shame is taken away from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that garment of reproach, that garment that they have known you with, that garment. They even call you by that garment. You know, they call, look at the Bible, evil spirit, that bland Bartimaeus. They should have just called it Bartimaeus. But they had to put his garment there. That is his garment, blindness. Are you barren? Are you jobless? Are you whatever you are going through right now? And people are calling you by that name. I decree today that garment is removed in the name of that garment is ripped off you. You know, the Bible says Joshua, the high priest, stood before the Lord. But the enemy was was resisting him, was was was. Um, I, accusing him. Why? Because he was wearing a filthy garment. And the Lord said, that thou Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And he told him that I stood by him and told him, remove this filthy garment from him. And they wore him a robe, a priestly robe. And they put a mitre, a crown upon his head and gave him a scepter. I pray for you, that garment of shame, that garment of reproach, that garment that is known with you, that people call you, but that negative garment is ripped off you right now. It's removed from you right now. Mazu, brother, he that garment is not off you right now in the name of today god we ask you the garment 
of glory, the garment of abundance, the garment of, of, of peace and prosperity in the name of Jesus. I mean, God is putting upon your head today the crown of glory. Hallelujah. The crown of power. Hallelujah. As you go this way, you are going in God's glory. You are going in God's power. You are going with the strength of God in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus. Say amen. Come on, shout amen. Glory to God. I'd like you to do something for me as I'm praying for you. Type in the comments. Saying, so say, just type in the, say, my garment of shame is being ripped off. My garment of reproach ripped off. Type it in the comment section now in the name of Jesus. I say amen. Now type amen in the comment section as I'm praying now. I want to employ, please share this video all across your social media platform. Let's get more people on board to hear God's word and to be blessed by the word of God. Hallelujah. The second garment is the second is this, is the garment of sin. Any garment of sin upon you, I help you remove them right now. That, that thing you are struggling with, that life that you are struggling with, may the grace of God be made available for you to rip them off of you in the name of Jesus Christ. That limitation on your life is removed right now. That embargo, that embargo, that is removed right now. That embargo upon your life, I terminate it by the blood of Jesus Christ. I terminate that embargo. I remove that embargo right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, like, like Jesus told that man, as, as he said, go to your home, be healed. Let me read it from here. And, and if I say 11, Mark 2, 11, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. Arise today, go. Go and prosper. Go, Mazubra the Ida Pahandata. Go and succeed. Go today and make it. Go today and prosper. Go today and be great. Let the glory of the Lord be upon you today. In the name of Jesus. I lay my hand upon you. And I lay my hand upon that business. That thing that is of a concern to you. And I decree, let the grace of God be upon it. Let God show up for you today. Let God show up for you. As you go today, my friend, even throughout these remaining days of this month, may God show up for you. May the Lord God of heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, show up for you powerfully. Let him show up for you and let his glory be seen upon your life. God's glory will be seen upon your life today and this week in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus. You are welcome into a new week a great week a week of prosperity and abundance for you the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace you love the peace of god round about in jesus name now before i sign out let me encourage you help us share this video share the link all across your social media uh, platforms and all of that. If you have not subscribed to uh, my YouTube channel, do so right now. Just press the button down the screen somewhere there and also press that bell to let all you know when we come live online. Hallelujah. And if you are not following me on Facebook, please do so right now. Like our video, comment, share, like, comment, share. And then Lord God of heaven, he will bless you. Glory to God. I got to let you go to let you do your business. I've just done mine. God we prosper your business. God, he will show you kindness. God, the beauty of God is upon that business as you go. That business will not fail. Your life will not fail. That marriage will not scatter. God is there with you in the name of Jesus. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will strengthen you. He will hold you with his right hand of righteousness. God will make, bring you to success. You will succeed. Let me say it again, my friend. You will succeed. You will do well in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, head on to Audio Mark now. There are beautiful, very powerful audio messages there for you to, to be blessed by. Amen. It's powerful, free. And like I said when I was starting this broadcast, if you want to be on our mailing list so that you will receive the audio broadcast every Monday morning, Mondays through Friday, just put your name and your phone number in the comment section and all of that. Uh, I, I will send a link to the audio mark, you know, in the comment section so that you can assess it directly from this broadcast and all of that. And um, if you need somebody to um, be on our mailing list for the daily word broadcast, put the person's name, the person's phone number also in the comment section. Of course, I will send the link, but please send us the uh, the uh, the phone number of the person and the and the person's um, name so that we put the person's name on the mailing list, you know, so that when we are uploaded on WhatsApp and all of that, the persons can receive fresh word of God every day. 
Hallelujah. Now, the next Monday when I'm meeting is going to be our independence. Nigeria's independence is on Monday, on Sunday, but then the broadcast is on Monday. It's going to be a two-part broadcast. Don't miss it. Put it in your diary. Put it in your calendar. Monday morning, 5.30. I will be here to speak over your life and then pray over Nigeria. Let me sign out right now. My name is Emmanuel Adeyomoye. I just want to be a blessing. God bless you. Have yourself a great week. Hallelujah.